ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. A few years ago, author Kit Williams published a book with no title on it. It is the story of bees, the riddle of the bees. In fact, he writes on the inside page, I have words to offer wisdom and pictures to delight, a story of a tragic queen in a fearless night, but my name remains a secret. It's hidden here within. If you can but find it more treasure, you might win. Thus the book with no title, it is the historical, uh, ever-present riddle of the bees. Gary Stimmer is here to discuss with me a rather esoteric subject. And, J.R., it's a rather esoteric riddle. Uh, Kit Williams actually was uh, the rage of the British Isles because if you could solve the riddle of that book, you could find a treasure worth a lot of money. Um, that's uh, not exactly the point, however. The book is the point because the characters of this book are an old man, a young man, a woman, and a child, and a lion. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just show you this picture. Here we have the woman, which, by the way, there's, I guess, nothing in this book tells us who the woman is. That's right. She's the queen and the fearless knight. I would have to say this was Diana, and uh, this was Apollo, or no, would this be Zeus? Well, Apollo, probably. Apollo. Okay. But here is the child Messiah. Right. And uh, he's got the, the attire of a joker. This is old father time here. The old world order, the new world order, and out of his mouth comes these bees. Mm. <laughs> well, this takes us back to the riddle of Samson. We're yeah. going to talk about that on today's program. Gary? Yeah. Tell us what happened in the days of Samson and how this story has such a historical significance. Well, the story of, uh, of the riddle, Kit Williams' riddle, is uh, centered about the lion and the bees. Now, if you're sitting there and, and, and you've enjoyed reading the Bible, and maybe you've even read the story of Samson, uh, you remember that he uh, was a specially gifted child, uh, born to Israelites down in the territory next to Ashkelon, or, or next to the land of the Philistines. Uh, Samson was of the tribe of Dan. He grew up to be a young man dedicated to the Lord, a Nazarite. That means he was to eat no pleasant thing. He was to, never to touch a dead body. Uh, he was to keep himself pure, and he was to be a savior to his people. This was the time of Judges. Judges 14, he asked his parents one day, he says, you know, I've seen a beautiful Philistine uh, girl, and I would like for you to introduce uh, uh, me to her family, and I'd like to, to get to know her and to marry her. Well, this is strictly uh, a re an act of rebellion on the part of this Nazarite youth. Uh, but nevertheless, he went down to visit the girl, <clears throat> and on his way, J.R., he killed a lion with his bare hands. Uh, sometime later, he was traveling the same route, and he saw the carcass of the dead lion, and it was filled with bees. They had built a nest there, or a hive, and they had filled the carcass with honey. Samson went over to the carcass, he touched it, he opened it, he partook of the honey, he took some of it home to his parents, and in, in so doing, he violated his Nazarite vows. He went back to his parents, persisted in marrying the Philistine girl, and J.R., this is where the story gets interesting, because in the process of getting to know the Philistine girl's family, he poses a riddle to the family during the wedding feast. And this is in Judges 14, 14, and he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they, that is the Philistines, could not in three days expound the riddle. He posed the riddle of the bees, bringing us right up to the present moment. Amazing. And in this book by Kit Williams, he has a picture here of the lion and the bees. And so the big conflict is the, between the bees and the lion. The bees want the lion dead, and they want to build honey uh, or make honey in the carcass of the lion. The only way to make honey is for the lion to be dead. 
Uh, this has tremendous historical implications because it has been the desire of Lucifer down through the centuries to kill the Jews. The Jews have been the brunt of every um, major problem and war. Uh, there's been a continual desire and attempt to eradicate the Jews from this planet. It was true before the, day, the days of the birth of Jesus, and it's true even in this generation as the world has tried to get rid of the Jews. Well, of course, the ultimate uh, attempt will be when the tribulation period comes during those seven years, the Antichrist will try to get rid of all the Jews. And uh, we see this in this incredible riddle. Of we the do beast. indeed, because uh, the lion is the lion of Judah, thought to be dead, by the way, and considered by the nations to be dead. And, and J.R., uh, there are a couple of places in the Bible where the nations are mentioned as bees. For example, in Psalm 118, 8 through 12, uh, where it is written, it is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in man. When you get down to the 12th verse, it says, they, the nations, compassed me about like bees. Here is the, the international plot against Israel featured as bees. The Amorites, the ancient enemies of Israel, uh, did, who dwelt in the mountain where Israel wished to pass into the land, uh, guarded that land. And uh, the Amorites which dwelt in that mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do. That's uh, Deuteronomy 1, through 46. And so the bees then are a picture of the enemies of Israel. So it becomes a metaphor yes. in the Bible known uh, there talk, talking about the Amorites, and then of course Samson and his bees, and then the, the uh, verses in the Psalms where right. the nations become the bees. Mm -hmm. I published a book some years ago, wrote a book entitled Guardians of the Grail and the Men Who Plan to Rule the World, and I talk about the bees in this book. In fact, uh, when uh, Childeric, uh, the uh, son of Merivé, and father of Clovis, who became the uh, first um, Merovingian ruler of the Christianized Roman Empire. Uh, when Childeric's tomb was uncovered, uh, they found 300 miniature solid gold replicas of bees. And uh, when Napoleon married Marie Louise in 1810, uh, he became the um, owner of these bees, and when he crowned himself as emperor, he had these bees sewn into the coronation robe. And here's a picture of Napoleon in his robes with all these 300 bees mm. on it. So he took the symbol of the bee because it was the Merovingian bee, and he thought that he mm -hmm. could, um, could restore the Merovingian dynasty. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, out, out of which our, our concept here uh, is that the Antichrist could be connected to the bees. Now, we need to uh, back up for just a moment and say that Diana, the ancient uh, mother goddess, thought to be the fertile, the self-fertile goddess of the world. That is, as a virgin, she brings forth life. And, of course, she is... Uh, uh, nothing more or less than a manifestation of Samaramis, who later becomes known uh, in Revelation as the harlot riding the beast. But J.R., in the time of Jesus and the apostles, uh, we have her clearly uh, viewed in the New Testament as Diana of the Ephesians. Uh, when Paul went up into Asia Minor, uh, into Ephesus, uh, he got in trouble with those who cast silver statues of Diana of the Ephesians. And uh, Diana was represented in Ephesus uh, by a little coin that was minted. On one side was a palm tree and a stag. On the face of it was the bee, the honey bee, representative of Diana. These little statues that we see in Acts 19 being cast by the silver workers in Ephesus actually had little bees cast right into the statue. And so the honey bee is a part of the picture of the harlot, Mystery Babylon the Great. Isn't that amazing? Manley P. Hall, some years ago, published a book called The Secret Teachings of All Ages. And on uh, a certain page in this book, there is a picture of Diana. 
and uh, she's got these little bees engraved on her. It looks like three bees down three sides. I get to be nine bees. It looks like that. Uh, that yes. takes us back to a Greek legend of the muses, doesn't it? The nine muses, which uh, would be uh, honeybees. The, the muses were thought to be little goddesses who would come in and control the mind. If, say, you were trying to compose a poem or work out a little math problem, and you would request help from the divine, the little muses would come into your mind and help you think. Well, the muses were the honeybees. <laughs> In his book, uh, The Two Babylons, Alexander Hislop has a picture here of the lion with a bee in his mouth from, believe it or not, ancient Babylon. And so when we come back, we'll be talking about ancient Babylon and the connection with mystery Babylon. Now we've given you the sources of the historical legend of the bees, the riddle of the bees. On this segment of the program, we're going to try to interpret it for you. Gary, the bees, uh, are the Merovingians, are the Danites, mm -hmm. are uh, the offspring of Samson. It all goes back to Samson, doesn't it? It, it does indeed. It's Samson, the time of the judges, but it even goes back to ancient Babylon. Uh, because to make this picture complete, uh, we have to uh, reference uh, a work by Alexander Hislop called The Two Babylons. And he links Babylon, the ancient Babylonian symbolism to uh, modern events, or for him modern, 19th and early 20th century. And he talks about the lion and the bee. Uh, in ancient uh, Babylon, there was a lion called Mesites, or the mediator, who was pictured with a bee in his mouth. Now, J.R., mm -hmm. an interesting uh, fact about the uh, ancient Chaldean language of the Babylonians is that the same word has two meanings. The word is dabar, and it means, it means word, and it means bee. So that word dabar, uh, which is the honeybee in the mouth of the lion, means word, and it means bee. So the bee is the word, the word is the bee, and in mystical symbolism you combine that and you come out with the lion with the word in his mouth, the mystical word, and J.R. It's a picture yes. of the false Christ. Now, you've got to understand that the Antichrist wants to be the Messiah. Well, Jesus is the word, the Debar. John, in chapter 1 of his gospel, says that Jesus is the Logos, the word, the Debar of the Hebrew language. And uh, the Antichrist wants to usurp that authority. He wants to be the word. And so we see the two, the two symbols of the lion and the bee and the conflict. And the problem is the lion has to be dead for the bee to make honey in the carcass of the lion. The lion, of course, representing the Messiah. When Jesus is introduced in uh, Revelation chapter 4, uh, the search is made of heaven and earth and under the earth, trying to find someone who is worthy to open the scroll that's in the hand of God, the judge who sits upon the throne. They can't find anyone until John begins to weep. And finally, one of the elders says, wait a minute, it is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is worthy to open mm. the book. <laughs> when he turned to yeah. see the lion, he saw a lamb as it had been slain. So these are symbolisms of the dead lion. Now, J.R., there's a conflict in this world today. There, over here you have the nations. Here you have Israel. Over here you have the false lion. Over here you have the true lion of the tribe of Judah. And J.R., when Paul went to Ephesus and found himself in direct conflict with the worshipers of Diana, by the way, her temple was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And it wasn't but a few years until that temple was destroyed and John became uh, the elder of the church of Ephesus just a few years later. Diana worship had all but disappeared in the wake of the new Christianity, but there was a secret order that went into Europe and preserved Diana worship under cover. This is the Merovingian line that J.R. wrote about in Guardians of the Grail. Napoleon knew all about it. He sewed those bees on his robe. And J.R., there is an order of people in the world today who have the keys to this ancient mystical riddle. And they were depicted by that event in the life of Samson. The dead lion, 
the bees in its carcass, the honey representing esoteric occult wisdom, uh, the hive representing a socialist empire. You know, a hive has a queen, yes. it has drones, it has workers, and it represents a kind of a socialistic uh, system that is building inside of the lion, which is a symbol of its attempt to usurp the power that's designated for Israel in the kingdom. And J.R., we're coming now to the heart of the story. Yes, let's get down to the real crux of the story. Uh, it may be called socialism today, but its true identity is communism. Communism is the social order of the hive. That's right. So we've got a problem today going on in the Middle East between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And Gary, to me, this is the bees are looking for a Samson, a, a, um, a world ruler, yes. uh, which the Bible calls the Antichrist, looking for a Samson to kill the lion or the Jews and, uh, and the Philistines. You remember when Samson died, he killed himself and he killed the Philistines. Well, this is what the, the bees of, shall we say, the United Nations world order really want. Mm. The, the, uh, the uh, world rulers want the Jews and the Palestinians to kill off each other so they can make honey or world government in the carcass. In the of carcass the lion. of the lion. Now here's the irony. The irony, if you go back to the riddle of Samson, uh, was that the Philistines were unable to answer his riddle. They had to cheat in order to find the answer to the riddle. And J.R., that's the bottom line today. The group of men who are attempting, and we could call them what, Oslo, the peace process, Madrid, uh, the United Nations authorities, people who are trying to build in the carcass of the lion, which they see as dead, r really have not answered the riddle. And they can't answer the riddle because they believe that the lion is dead and we know him to be alive and he's waiting in the wings to come back. And this is the bottom line in the riddle, uh, namely uh, that they don't have the answer. So the riddle of Samson is still going on to this very day. And uh, to me, Gary, uh, the history of the Philistines really comes back to put this all together because they were known as the sea people. Yes. And uh, Samson knew them. Samson talked to them. He was um, uh, scheduled to marry one of their girls. Yes. A Philistine girl. He knew the background of these people, and in my opinion, they were Greeks. Well, you know, his, history seems to agree that the Sea Peoples, that is the Philistines of the uh, Old Testament, uh, actually came from the Greek Isles and attempted to wipe out the Israelites. Well, uh, it's kind of fascinating that the history of Dan, that is the tribe out of which Samson came, was that they ventured north uh, and eventually were said to have migrated westward over into the land of the Greeks, or shall we say Europe. Now, uh, we're not teaching an, an Anglo-Israelism here, no. but we are saying that the Danites were a rebellious tribe, just like yeah. Samson. J.R., I wanted to mention just one quick thing, and that is that today Israel is said to have the Samson complex. With all their nuclear weapons and so forth, they have more or less stated uh, if we go, we're going to take the world down with us, just like Samson took the temple down. Or take their enemies anyway, which are the Arabs and the Palestinians. Right. And so I can, I can imagine that uh, the United Nations, they, they know that the Arab world is militant and there's no way to make peace with them. Uh, they want everyone in the world to be Islamic. And so these uh, European fellows that want to rule the world, set up a United Nations type government to control the planet, have to get rid of the uh, Jews and uh, the Arabs. It's, it's Lucifer pitting two people against each other, divide and conquer, and when, uh, when there's nothing left but ashes, they'll come in and make honey in the carcass. Exactly right. Now, again, the symbolism uh, of Samson's riddle is the dead lion. This is a future picture of an Isra Israel thought to be dead, of the high being built in the lion, which is thinking to take over that dead carcass. Uh, but in fact, in the process uh, of, of this usurpation, there will come the true lion of the tribe of Judah, 
and uh, he will ravage that carcass. He'll save the day, won't he? Save the day. <laughs> <laughs> so Israel is scheduled for annihilation. Will it be a nuclear war? Will the impending war in the Middle East, I hope it's still impending by the time you see this program, because uh, they feel that war could erupt at any moment over there now, and everyone's on war alert. Is it possible that they're scheduled for demise? And the Arabs as well, get rid of the whole bunch, and then the United Nations will be able to step in and establish world government for themselves and the carcass of the lion. This is the story right out of the scriptures, and I believe it has a tremendous prophetic implication. We'll be back in just a moment. 